Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a hardware RAID 5 based on Arica ARC1210 controller, how to create a RAID array and what to do if the controller doesn't work. Losing important data is something that you can never predict. Although RAID 5 is one of the most reliable solutions to store data among other disk array types, it can't guarantee 100 protection against data loss. At any time, one or several disks may fail, and this is also true about the controller or other hardware. Other possible issues may include wrong configuration, accidental removal of hard disks or their formatting, but the result is the same – important information can be lost for good. In today's video, I'll show you how to recover data from a RAID system if your controller is no longer working properly. First of all, let's explore the process of creating a RAID system, the important aspects to be considered when building it, and the settings which become crucial if you want to make data recovery possible. This RAID will consist of three hard disks combined into an array with the help of the controller Arica ARC1210. When starting the operating system with the installed RAID controller and the hard disks, this message will appear on the screen. It will remain there for about 5 seconds, which gives you enough time to start the setup tool by pressing the Tab or F6 key. To skip setup, press Escape. When you enter the setup menu, you'll see the BIOS window with the dialog box, which lists the controllers connected to the motherboard. Use the arrow up and arrow down keys to select the adapter which needs to be configured, and then press Enter to access the main setup menu. For quick configuration of your RAID system, select the first menu item – Quick Volume – RAID Setup – and press Enter. From this list, select your RAID type and press Enter to continue. Set the volume capacity. Stripe size, select Create Volume, Yes, and press Enter to confirm. After that, choose Initialization mode – Foreground Initialization, Background Initialization or No Initialization – and press Enter to confirm it. Now the RAID system has been created. To exit and restart, press the Tab key several times. When the system starts booting again, skip the setup stage by pressing Escape and wait until the system boots. Open Disk Management and partition the new disk. The other way to create a RAID system is by using a web browser or the manufacturer's utility ARC HTTP. The utility will help you identify the controller and its IP address. Start it by double-clicking on its icon in the Quick Access menu or open it from the Start menu. In the left side of the browser window, you will see the list of identified controllers. Select your device from the list and expand this tab. When you click on the model, a new browser tab opens with the IP address of your storage device. If the controller cannot be identified, download drivers and install them manually. To access the RAID controller management panel, enter username and password. By default, the username is admin and the password is four zeros. Open the tab Quick Function. Quick Create. In the window that opens, look to the right to select RAID level, set the capacity, initialization mode, stripe size, then check this box and click Submit. The volume is created, wait for initialization, and then it will appear in the disk management menu. The last step is to partition it and write your data to the disk. Open Disk Management, Initialize Disk, OK, and partition it. When the controller fails, you won't be able to access the data on the disks without replacing it. You can try reading the hard disks with the help of a Linux operating system, but if you aren't an expert user, there's always a risk to make things even worse and lose the data completely. If your attempt at replacing the damaged controller wasn't successful, then use a specialized RAID data recovery tool. 
Hetman RAID Recovery. This program supports most popular file systems and RAID types. It can read all the information about the controller used to create the disk array and will rebuild the damaged RAID system. Connect the disks directly to the motherboard of a Windows computer and launch the program. By the way, before you start the recovery process, make sure you have a disk with the same or larger capacity than the amount of data you are going to recover. While connecting the hard disks, you may discover that you don't have enough setup words and power connectors. This problem can be fixed with a variety of expansion cards and power adapters, and we are showing some of them on the screen right now. As you can see, the Data Recovery tool has easily rebuilt the damaged RAID system automatically using the hard disks which are connected. You can check all the details below to make sure that everything was identified properly. Right-click on the array and start fast scan to search for files. After that, click Finish to display the search result. Find the folders where, you, where your files used to be. By clicking on a file, you can use the Preview feature. Select all the files you want to recover, click Recovery, select where you want to save them, and click Recovery again. When the entire process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. If FastScan doesn't help the program to find the lost data, then go for full analysis. Even if the program failed to recognize and rebuild your disk array automatically, you can still use the RAID constructor. However, it requires you to know all the information about this specific disk array. Select Manual mode and click Next. Then select the RAID type, the block size in order, select the disks in the array, and specify their order. Add empty disks instead of any disks that are shown as missing. If you get the properties right, uh, the RAID system will be displayed as having at least one partition. Open it and check if the folder you need is there. If the volume doesn't appear but you know that the properties are correct, most likely you will have to find and enter the offset value which says where the beginning of the file system is located on the disk. With this controller type, RAID arrays are built in such a way that the beginning of the file system does not coincide with the beginning of the disk. As some information was erased, the program failed to identify the offset automatically. Use the hex editor to find it. Start it by right-clicking on the disk and then select hex editor from the menu, or press the key shortcut Cut Ctrl plus H. Click on the search icon here and type the following value into this field. EFI part and click Find. Use the identified value but with minus one sector. That is, you find 521 but you use 520 because the beginning of the file system is located in the second sector from the beginning. Enter this offset for each of the disks. Double-click on a disk or click on this icon and type the offset in this field. If the volume didn't show up before, it should appear now that you have entered the offset value. When all the properties are given, click Add. After that, the RAID system will appear in the Drive Manager. Now the final step is to scan it and recover your data. Summing up, a loss of data often occurs when hard disks are swapped over or placed into another storage system to in an attempt to rebuild the disk array. Be careful! Pay attention to what you're doing and don't agree to initialize and format the disks when the other operating system suggests it.
Formatting the boot disk or boot partition may damage or remove the striping, which reduces your chances for data recovery and may cause a permanent data loss. Before taking any action, make sure you have backed up your files. Hetman RAID Recovery offers extra features to improve effectiveness of working with RAID disks that have hardware issues. It lets you create disk images and then analyze these images instead of the actual hard disks in order to reduce disk usage and prevent them from breaking down at the most inappropriate moment. Always remember to back up important information regularly in order to prevent data loss. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions, thank you for watching, and good luck! While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments on the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's dishonorable invasion.